And hopefully nobody paid attention to Jay Z's tweet. <laughs> uh, I deleted him. Uh, Fourteen people saw it before I caught that it was a bad idea. Fair enough. All right. Let's see if it pops up in Twitter here. I just sent it. Oh yeah, he. Oh, I forgot GameSpot's been around that long. So yeah, I read that review. It's interesting. It makes a lot of interesting points. I really like the tagline on that review. Once you know exactly what to do and skip as much plot as possible, you can run through the game in three hours or less. Yep. I believe that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I did a I did a second round, like codec codec free second round. It took me like three hours. Yeah, nice. yeah I can see that. <laughs> wow. It's you really did see my game. my extra bonus Metal Gear playthrough. Oh no. Yeah, is that is that your stuff? That is my stuff from oh. 80, whatever, 88, 87. Oh, wow. Whenever it came out. I had never played it. I mean, I played it. I would never understood anything about it. Mm -hmm. That game is awesome. <laughs> really? When you're an adult and you know what's happening, it was a lot of fun. Nice. All right. Well, we are live here, uh, but we don't have that. That tweet didn't hit yet, but I'm not too worried about it. Ah, all right. Well, up oh, there it is. Ha ha. All right. Let me just destroy my keyboard here. Yeah, what does that thing owe you money or something? It does. I'm just a very heavy handed typer. Show it who's the boss. Yeah. Well, when your hands weigh six pounds a piece. <laughs> Your poor penis. <laughs> <laughs> if I hit a nickel. <laughs> oh, good lord. Okay, it's going to be one of those nights. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. You gentlemen ready? Uh, yeah, yep. I need some time. All right, cool. Get this going in three, two, one. Welcome back to TVGP's Game Clubcast, where folks from the TVGP.tv forums get together once a month and talk about a community-voted game. Uh, I'm your host, The Hannah. With me, as always, is Nintendork327. Hi, everybody. And the other Jay-Z. Hey! And also with us today, uh, from Argentina, you said? Yeah, that's right. Uh, is Cerebro. Hey guys, thanks thanks for having me. Yeah, aka Cerbero on the forums. We have to give your official forum name for <laughs> yeah. you know for reasons. But that's that's just it, it's a little context to explain why Scott keeps saying it wrong. Well, you know, <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll just be all over the place. It doesn't so. matter. <laughs> it's over. Uh, so this month we had uh, a trio of games that were weird. So we had Fugazi suggesting Dark Souls. Yay. Uh, we had Urgent X Fury uh, suggesting Rambo the video game. I Yay. would have fought him in real life. <laughs> <laughs> he would have killed me, but I would have found For him sure. and fought him. For sure. And of course, Cerebro here suggested Metal Gear Solid, and that was the Boo. winner by about a mile. <laughs> uh, so, Metal Gear Solid. Let's chat. Uh, Metal Gear Solid is an action-adventure stealth game published by Konami, developed by Konami Computer Entertainment Japan, released on October 21st. If you read my notes here, 21th, uh, 1998 in North America. Uh, it came out September 3rd in Japan. Uh, it came out on the original PlayStation and on the PC a year later, but since then it's come out on uh, PlayStation Network and you can play it on the Vita, the PS3. Uh, and I think I think there was a, a version of it on the Dreamcast at one point, or that might have just been Bleem emulation or something. That was no official release on the Dreamcast. Yeah, yeah. So what version did everyone play? Uh, I, I took the uh, 45 minutes and downloaded the 780 megs off of PlayStation Network. Solid choice. It I actually took way too long. Yeah. <laughs> My first playthrough was on the original PS1. Oh, cool. Uh, now, when, when I suggested the game and it actually won easily, I might add, <laughs> uh, I, I actually uh, played the PC port. Oh, nice. That's uh that's a bold that's choice. That's not <laughs> on that's not on Steam or anything, right? I don't you actually know. had a disc for it? Uh yeah, but let's wow. say I did. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh. I got it. 
I got you. <clears throat> Moving on. And what about you, Nintendo? Or who'd you play it on? I actually played it on the original PlayStation back in the day. Oh, okay. And I also played it on the PS uh, in store. Did yeah. you try on the PSP, Jake? I don't own a PSP. But I do. I, for- I forgot to mention that I, I did play it when it originally ish came out. So it's not new territory. For yeah. Me. So I've played it on the original PS1. Uh, I've played it on a PS2. I've played it on a PS3. I've played it on a PSP. And I've played it on a Vita. I've played wow. this game <laughs> everywhere but the PC. Tell us why you hate it, Brian. Um, <laughs> God, I mean, there's just so many reasons. Actually, there's reading, reading Jay Z's notes. I'm kind of like, huh? Do I like this game? Yeah, I found a couple of holes. See, I think Jay Z and I have flipped roles this month. I know it's going to be really fun. Really I think I'm going to be watch. holding the banner, and Jay Z is going to be shooting the bullets. <laughs> uh, we shall see. Uh, I'm going to aim low. So uh, this was actually a direct sequel. It was written and produced and directed by Hideo Kojima, just like all the Metal Gear games are. Uh, but this is the direct sequel to the MSX2 versions of Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, the second of which never came out in the USA, so who cares. But they were special um, features on the subsistence release of Metal Gear Solid 3, so you can play them there. Uh, so I'm going to go through the story synopsis here that I got from Giant Bomb, and... It's not really going to cover anything. I just want to <laughs> say it out loud. <laughs> Even the synopsis is complicated. Is, is this all one sentence? I think this is all one sentence. I think it might all be one sentence. So, the game is set in 2005, six years after a battle-hardened infiltrator of United States Special Forces Unit Foxhound, codenamed Solid Snake, infiltrated the military nation of Zanzibar Land, destroyed armor bipedal tank Metal Gear D with its pilot Rogue Foxhound operative Gray Fox, and eliminated its leader Rogue Foxhound Commander Big Boss. A secret nuclear weapon disposal facility, codenamed Shadow Moses, located on a remote island in Alaxis Fox Islands... Uh, has been attacked by a terrorist splinter cell of Foxhound, led by the mysterious Liquid Snake, who threatens the United States government with nuclear weapons if they do not provide the remains of Big Boss. Players reprise the role of Solid Snake, brought out of retirement again, and dispatched by Colonel Roy Campbell of the U.S. government to neutralize the threat and rescue two key hostages, DARPA Chief Donald Anderson and Arms Tech President Kenneth Baker. So that's just the setup for the story. That's really like the prologue. That was three sentences. <laughs> that was three sentences, <laughs> and it's like half the document. It's like a lot right. of coll- commas. Yes. That's what happens when you make really basic old games, and then you have to make the stories fit with the new ones. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, ret- retcon them all in. Retcon like crazy. So let's do our standard time travel here. We're going back to October 1998. Um, Reception, this is one of the most revered games of all time. I, I, don't, th- I don't think that's debated in any circles here. Uh, this came out, and it's as as of 2003 had sold sold a total of two, uh, six million copies, and I'm sure it's way more than that now. Mm-hmm. No, if, well, if you don't count the people who played on PC, that's true. Yeah, so <laughs> and we don't count those people. They don't count, yeah, not at all. Um, <laughs> and so normally, this is the part of the show where I, I we we sort of address like what else came out around that time. And so if you if you know anything about video game history. There's a common notion that 1998 was one of the single best years for game releases ever. Period. And I've always kind of been like, yeah, that was a good year, but like, it couldn't have been that much awesome stuff. This is insane. This list is, (laughs) this list is insane on a number of levels. I'm just, I'm just gonna real everything. Normally, we bold the items that are like important releases. This whole list is bold. So, between September and, like, the beginning of December, I I reached out to, just because I wanted to say a couple of the names here, you had Resident Evil Director's Cut, you had Fallout 2, Pokemon Red and Blue, Grim Fandango, Half-Life, Legend of Zelda The Ocarina of Time, StarCraft Brood War, Thief the Dark Project, Baldur's Gate, Star Siege Tribes, Star Wars Rogue Squadron, the original Mario Party, and Suikoden 2. I thought this year was bad. <laughs> the, yeah, wow. Wow. Which is actually kind of funny, because both Fallout 4 and um, Legacy of the Void are out on Tuesday, so... Oh, yeah. Oh, all we need is a Mario Party and a Baldur's Gate, and we'll be all right. Right? And we'll, we'll have a conspiracy. At Star Wars yeah. Battlefront. By the way, 
a new Zelda game came out. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. That that big heaping pile. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. Boy. You guys. Yeah. Half Life Three. Oh. It's coming oh. out this month. Half Life Three confirmed. Yeah. We again. cracked the code. We did it, no, guys. It's not. We did it. <laughs> High fives all around. High fives all around. <laughs> so I mean, we could time travel all we want on this. This game's amazing. It got an ex- an excellent reception when it came out, and it came out amidst all of that. When, when one thing you did not put on here, um, oh wait, that didn't come out till the next year. When did Final Fantasy VIII come out? Final Fantasy VIII came out. I want to say ninety nine. No, it was ninety eight. What year? What uh, month did it come out in? September ninety eight. It came oh. out nine nineteen and ninety nine. I think. Okay, so, well then. Well, that's a or ninety eight. Sorry. The Wikipedia list wasn't terribly reliable for this year, unfortunately. I could be wrong about. It. I got to look that up now. Well, and here's here's what's notable. Metal Gear was not a franchise until Ooh. this game came out. No. Like, it was that weird game that you played at your friend's house on his Nintendo, mm-hmm. and some dude feels asleep, and then you just walk around four screens until dogs eat you. Yes. Hey, I'm going to have to uh, take you to the task on that. Because that well, game when, I played. When you're seven. That game I played. Well, when you're seven, that's impossible. When you're <laughs> 37, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so you, pl- you played the original Metal Gear, right? I did. If you saw the thread, I posted a picture. I pulled out my old Nintendo. I pulled out my old copy of Metal Gear, the original on the NES. Oh, man. And I went into it with the same impression Jake had, which is this game is terrible because I was seven the last time I played it. Mm-hmm. What? There's nothing going on. I was stunned by how much I loved it. I didn't actually make it all the way through because it was okay. a trick or treat. But if I known it was that good, I would have made a better effort to finish it. Uh, or at least to put more time into it. I forgot that came out on the Ultra imprint. It didn't come out on Konami proper here. Mm-hmm. Yes, it did. It came out with the uh, Ultra. Yeah. Oh, God. That great. So I will say that as an adult, the game makes way better sense. There's a lot of trouble with the translation. Mm-hmm. You have to look a bit of that. But one of the coolest, it's got some really cool plot points, especially when you consider that this is an 8-bit Nintendo game. One of the first things you have to do is when you infiltrate the building, the first building, you have to give yourself up and surrender to progress you have to basically have yourself arrested they yeah. put you into a cell you have to find a way out of the cell you have to find your weapons you have to defeat bosses much like you do in metal gear solid you know they have names they have personalities they're unique there's a guy called the machine gun kid guess what he does he shoots a machine gun Ooh. Do, do, do they all run away the first time you fight them too because I, I, like the first six hours of Metal Gear Solid is all right. Here's a boss. Let's do this, and then you pop them a bunch of times, and they're like, "So you?" <laughs> no, they, or, they, when or they die, they stay dead. Or a ninja shows up and renders some guy mostly ominous. Oh, boo! <laughs> <laughs> like I, I was getting so frustrated because it's like I, just, I don't know. I know Ocelot shows up in two. I've played two. I know he shows up, but let me pop this dude a couple of times and at least think he's dead. Right. Nope. Oh, he's a major pillar in the story. You can't do that. He's, I don't yeah. know how you can play a video game, Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna hold to that kind of logic, I just I I it you just feel rash like I accomplished your health after you've been shot with bullets. I mean, I'm not saying I was mad he survived. I'm saying make it look like he died, and then you can in two when you want to bring him back go like, no, here's what really happened. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Make me feel like two. I. We somebody. have to listen to you complain about how they retconned in <laughs> a story to get this guy back. Well, before we get into all that, let's talk about the first hour of this game and what we all liked. Uh, so, anybody who wants to go first, feel free. I'm gonna... I think we need to let our guest, who mm-hmm. I can't say because I've forgotten how to say Cerebro, it. Cerebro, would you like <laughs> to go? Cerebro, sure. Well, uh, before I say something about the first tower, I just want to say real briefly why I chose this game. Oh, yes. Which, which is, uh, which is also... Fault. I should have asked you to say that. My nah, don't worry about it. Which is also <laughs> connected to actually the first tower. So, like most people, this is the first Metal Gear game that I played. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the first PlayStation games that I played, actually. Yeah. Same here. So, after I, I witnessed the first hour, I was, I was flabbergasted. I mean... These uh, security guards were changing their their routes f- based on the footprints that I left on the snow. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I could see the the breath uh, coming out of their faces. It was it was breathtaking. <laughs> it was it was shocking. <laughs> so that's what uh, that's when I said, okay, this is what video games can do. Video games can be actually 
this amazing movie-like stories and be be completely amazing. So yeah, it's a it's a very very personal game for me. But you can go ahead and wreck it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that this is a game that hooked you on playing video games? Hello? What? Did, oh no, did he get... Did the hamsters die? The hamster stopped running. Oh no, we lost him. Oh, oh. Alright, well hopefully he comes back in a minute here. Uh, uh, Nintendo, do you want to start? Yeah, I have to say, uh, full apologies to Sir... 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 Cerebro. Just call him Sarah. Cerebro. No, I can't call him Just that. Just call him Sir. <laughs> because when this game came up and won, I rolled my eyes and I really, really was unhappy. I didn't feel like it was a game worthy of, of Game Club. I thought Game Club was a little more obscure. But after playing, even the, just landing at that opening dock area and running around to the elevator, I, ch I completely changed my opinion. Yeah. Given the fact that this game is now, how old are we talking? Almost 18 years old? Um, it, or I guess 17 years old. It certainly is old enough now that there's a whole generation of gamers that never played it. Mm -hmm. um, it was just, uh, it was a great trip for me down Nostalgia Road, because having played the game back in the original PlayStation era, yeah, um, it was a weird sort of looking at it going, these are the worst graphics imaginable, mixed with I can't believe they were able to pull these graphics out of the PlayStation. Yeah. Like, I couldn't believe that they were able to pull so much environment out of such crappy polygon count. Oh, yeah. It's like so that, two polygons. Ooh. Did I drop the call? Uh, I think Cerebro may be trying to call back in here. Hold on. Let me get back here. Why is it? It looks like I dropped the call, but I didn't. Like, I can still hear you guys, right? Yeah. Yep. This is super weird. Okay. Yeah, it looks like he's back on. Huh. Okay, let's see what's happening here. Science! Yeah. I want that Simpsons technical difficulties placard to put up. Ah, uh, yeah, I wish I had it. That would be really nice. It's, you know what? I do have it. It's on my old computer because I had to put it up for uh, one of these, I think. Hmm, okay. Oh, I don't want to restart the call. Do I want to restart the call? I don't even know if I can end the call, actually. All right, let's, let's just hit video call again here. Oh, okay, lost Jay-Z. Sorry for that. That's all right. No, I'm here. You're here? It's saying call mm -hmm. fail. There, there we go. All right. I was going to say, are you, are you, is this like a horror movie now? Is it, Have you seen that movie, by the way? Uh, the Skype it? movie? No. Yeah, it looks real dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it looks yeah, dumb in a good way. Unfriended movie? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Unfriended. Oh, did, oh, hold on. Why did I lose Jay-Z? Is he officially gone? I'm still around, man. <laughs> I'm here. Sky I cannot hear Hannah, though. I Okay. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, okay, yeah. Why is Skype being crazy today? Of all the days. All right, can you guys hear me yet? Yep. Okay. Cerebro, you got me? I can hear you guys. Okay. Man, this is uh, this is riveting podcasting right here. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all right. Well, I'll cut all this out in post. Let's just let's just forge ahead. Let's just keep going and see. Do as much as we can here. Uh, so, so wait a minute. Are we dropping Cerebro? No, sir. What's his name? <laughs> Cerebro. We can't give up on him like that. <clears throat> He's our guest. Well, let me try and get him back in here. I, turn our back. If if what I, happens? If, if my Skype is to believe right now, I've actually lost both of you guys. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I have you back. What happens if you have to restart the call? Um, I it's just a, a bit of a jump in the uh, podcast, I guess. I'm gonna try and add you guys back here. What is going on? Okay. Can Here's you guys hear me now? Uh, yes, I can hear you. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hang this up completely, and I'm going to restart Skype, and I'm just going to bring this all back up. 
Fair enough. All okay. right. I'll be back in just a minute. Do 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 do. Hi, Internet. Okay. All right. So I've got the other Jay-Z. I've got Nintendork. Hey guys, can you hear me now? Yes, I mm -hmm. gotcha. Great. Okay, that was the strangest thing ever, sorry. So, can I ask you real quick, what do we do if that happens again? Should I call back or should I just... Just wait for me to call you back, that's going to okay. be the best sorry. option. I'm hoping it doesn't happen again. I think Skype was just freaking out. Uh, all right, I, so I'm, I'm going to start Pamela I, back up here too, so we can record sure. this. Yeah. All right, give me one moment. We're just going to pick up at first hour impressions? Yeah, pretty Turn much. Turn it over to... Cere Cerebro? Yes. Woo! Okay. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Looks like I need to restart Pamela, too. <laughs> yeah, Boston, thanks for being in chat. Uh, yo, you're going to need to edit some of this. <laughs> <laughs> Can we curse now? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to, not going to lie. Okay. So Pamela is back, Pamela is recording, and let's pick it back up at first impressions after a count. Three, two, one. All right, we're back, I guess. Hopefully Skype doesn't freak out on us again like it did a minute ago. Um, so we were in the middle of first hour impressions with Nintendo. So let's just pick back up there. Well, let's turn it over to our guest now. Okay, yeah, not a bad idea. Since he's back okay. in action. Great. Well, I think that what shocked me the most of the first hour was the strong emphasis on stealth. I, I had never played person on the personal level. I have never played a game that made so much emphasis on, tra on just leaving you naked, no guns, and no and, instructions. And not, and not easy either. Like, I died in the not first easy. five minutes because I stepped in a puddle, yeah. and I didn't put it together that that's going to make noise. And they came a-running, and... <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Mess your world up. Yeah, even even getting to that first elevator was quite a challenge. So it, it was a way of, of just getting you ready for what the game was going to be. Yeah. And once you get on top of that elevator, I, I remember being very surprised by the way that the layout was presented. Like you got you got a first view of those reflector lights and the guards doing their rounds. Then you move a bit to the left and you get the surveillance camera. It was presenting you all the all the challenges that you were going to have along the yep. game. Mm -hmm. But it also so presents all of your opportunities at that moment. It, 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 uh, Colonel Campbell actually walks you through and just says, all right, you can get in this way, this way, this way, yeah. or this way. So in, in a way, it was like kind of a, a tutorial, let's say, that those first two parts of the game, the, the bottom elevator and the, and the top. So yeah. they, if, you, if you could get through that, you could get it all the way to the boss fights. Nothing can prepare you for the the weird Metal Gear boss fights, but if you could get through that kind I don't of know, I think LSD would be a good job at that. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe like two handfuls of Vicodin. Yeah, yeah. There was no internet back then, so no way to see <laughs> how to beat those bosses. But yeah, well, yeah I, on I that note, a, how yeah. in the world did anybody ever get through this game? <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> Dude, I, I bet they probably had strategy guides at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Brady Games. There were, um, I think, print magazines probably held mm -hmm. the answer. Oh, that yeah. was your internet. Yeah, let's wait for the new uh, issue of EGM to hit. Yeah. All right. Uh, With all the keys. I just made a, a few notes, like uh, the footprints on the snow, the, the breath on the guards, mm -hmm. the routes, and how they change according to what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to dodge the reflection lights, otherwise the game is pretty much over. Yeah, you, you get you get the first truck there as a way to get in. You get the first surveillance camera, and something that re that I thought was really amazing was uh, to f you have to follow the rats when you go into the ducks. Oh yeah, you you get kind of lost, so you call the 
you call the Alaska specialist and he tells you just to follow the rats. Mm -hmm. the was Alaska specialist. The, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. You call Master <laughs> Miller. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's those are the the first thoughts that I had on, on on the first hour. Again, depending on whether you played it codec free or if you read every single word of the codec, the, the first hour will vary a lot. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll just stop there. The first third of the guys. game or not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Jay Z. Um. Yeah. You know. Um. I'm going to talk a lot of smack about this game as oh, we go fine. forward, but I will say that you know a lot of that stuff that Cerebro just brought up was you know pretty revolutionary for the time, and I did try to keep that in mind when when I played through. Um, in spite of that, a lot of stuff hasn't aged well. But that being said, um, I don't know if some of these were part of the the PSN download and nothing else. Mm. Um, but I, I always, as I stated earlier. It, it's a 780 meg download, and it took two minutes to load the store. Yes. It took eight minutes to download, probably another five to install. Was this like, on the PS3 you downloaded it? Yeah. Yeah. No, the, P the PSN store on PS3 has always been a disaster. It takes forever to load. It's just poorly optimized. It's not much better as far as download speeds go. It's not much better on PS4. Yeah. I, I don't understand how these people ever got their multiplayer to work, but knows, whatever. Um, there's a vibration test in the options menu. That was fairly common for the time. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, you got to keep in mind that vibration was so new in 98. But here's, a, I, I guess I don't get, I, was it just the novelty of I can hit this button and make the controller vibrate? Like It, it was, does my controller support it? Because the PS1 yes. had, um, you know, you had the standard <clears throat> controller that didn't have vibration. Right, but ostensibly you would know that. Not necessarily. I mean, you're, ta you're talking from the perspective of someone like yourself. You're talking from a perspective of a guy who's been around with vibration since forever. <laughs> um, well, no, I thought, okay, well, that's probably around the time the DualShock came out. Mm -hmm. So that's the. But here's the thing. I, I guess that's the whole point of the DualShock. That's where DualShock got its name. That's for anybody who bought like a bundle. Yes. And didn't know that there were vibrating controllers out? Pretty much. Yeah, Maybe? I mean, that's, that's really it. And it, it sounds crazy now, but back then it was like, what if, like, it was called, for, it was still called force feedback in a lot of situations. Yeah. It just seems like such a small niche of people that I, I was surprised to see it. Yeah. Um, o and X are switched in the menu. Yeah. Oh, I was going to bring that up because the, the start menu, I hit the X button and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And I hit the circle button and I swore out loud. Thanks, Japan. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. and Final Fantasy VII are the two games that I think of with this, this little... It's not a bug, but it's a pain. It is It is a difference in... It's a cultural uh, phenomenon. It is. It really is, because the original idea of the symbols on the PlayStation controller was really like X was cancel, O was confirm. Right, that like... Was, it, yeah. like, like um. Like, if, if you want to get a little sort of imaginative about it, you know, if you take one of those lines off, you know, it's basically a circle with a line through it. That means yeah. no almost everywhere. So, mm -hmm. okay. Um, Snake's hair in that briefing. Oh, man. The mullet <laughs> is strong. <laughs> he is... was not taken from Alaska. He was taken straight from Bon Jovi in, back <laughs> into the mission. Uh, he uh, like he just escaped from New York. Yes, like yes, that yes. is one hundred percent Kurt Russell. Which, hey, I incidentally, on that note, there was some talk about uh, the crossover between the character of Solid Snake and the Escape from New York character. There His was name, recently, actually. yes, yeah. and there was some off. lawsuit potential, but because uh, Kojima was such a nice guy. Yes, I read that. It was basically, um, oh god, who directed those movies? It's gonna kill me. Uh, I can't think of his name was it either. Not John Carpenter, was it? it no, uh, was it? I feel like it was. No, I oh, and no. then there was the. There's all the comparisons. It was John Carpenter. Okay. The cover of Terminator and the cover yeah. of Metal Gear One. Mm -hmm. Like he's he's not shy about borrowing IP. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, there's there's more comparisons than that. If you look at some of the codec pictures from the first two Metal Gear games, like some of them are like straight up traced from movies. Well, but in a way, it's not it's not shameless stealing. It's it's a bit of a homage. homage. I mean, yeah. 
the the guy is called Pliskin, and that's the name of the guy in in Escape from New York. So, mm -hmm. and in the second game, that's human. actually the name that uh, that Solid Snake takes on at one point. Yeah, one man. Oh yeah, when he's that's his code name. Yeah, one uh, man's homage is another man's theft. That's true. <laughs> it's it's a very thin line. That is very true. Well, not not for nothing, you know. It's it's not like he's uh, he can't ever be accused of not having original ideas. How about that? For sure. <laughs> I was super excited that you could pause the cutscenes because they're not Metal Gear 4 levels of length. Nothing else. Um, but, you know, 10, 15 minutes, like, all right, I, I've been playing for a while. Here's a break point. I'm going to get up, grab a soda, beer, go wash my hands, go to the bathroom, whatever. And uh, so I hit the button, and I was like, oh, good. Oh, good. You, I, I was totally surprised that you could pause these because the game stopped. Mm -hmm. And, no, it, it froze because it was loading the next level. <laughs> yep. Crap. <laughs> awesome. Uh, in that first room, Cerebro, you were talking about all the stuff that you have to dodge, and, and it, it actually is pretty cool that it's not just totally linear. Um, in fact, I kind of circled around a couple of times trying to figure out where I was supposed to be going, but um, what's cool is when you... It's like this for most of the elevators, if not all in the game. They don't automatically start at the floor you're on, like Ooh. it's Mass Effect or something. You hit that button, and you got to wait there. And waiting for an elevator, not inherently exciting, but it really makes those scenes tense. It does. It does it's not job. inherently waiting. exciting until the guards start walking your way. Mm -hmm. Then you go, waiting come on, over, come on over, come on over, come on over. And I, I really liked sort of on subsequent uh, load-ups that they they do the, sort of the, the um, like Batman story refreshers. You know, we're, here's where you are in the game, here's what you've been doing, this is the story so far. Yeah. I feel like I, don't, I, I can't I think to, of a game before this that did it. I have to correct you. I was going to say, a la Batman. I think Batman came after this game. Uh, oh. Slightly. Slightly, yeah. <laughs> it, is, um, it, it was Batman, an interesting a touch. Of the year. Yeah. Yes. It, it was always an interesting touch because like, this is one of the few games where you can load it up after a while and be like, oh, yeah, that's what happened. Oh, man, this stuff is crazy. I'm ready to go. Yeah, it's, it's sort of a self... Um, they sort of recognize themselves like... We made this game a little dense. Let's give them a hand. Yeah. So, what? Here's the thing, though, as far dense of the the story density is, I didn't feel like it was dense until everybody starts lying. Yeah. Everybody starts admitting they're lying, and that happens at the end of the game. Oh yeah. So it's I didn't think it was all that dense for the first disc and some change, but then when everybody starts coming out and saying, "But I was lying to you," and no, I'm not really who I am. I'm I assume I assume someone's identity. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's bananas oh yeah and like this is like the least crazy Metal Gear game like by far yeah this was actually pretty coherent for the most part mm -hmm. straightforward spy story yeah uh, Jay-Z do you have any more? Mm -mm. that's the end of my nice things yeah I mean I, I, I could go over my impressions but I mean it's, it's basically the same stuff you guys said I, I've gotten to the point where I play this game and I know exactly what I do I you know, you crawl under that first little bit, and I'm like, okay, there's that first guard. I'm going to knock him out. I'm going to drag him around. I'm going to get me, you know, uh, over to the other side, get that first ration, go call the elevator, hide behind the forklift, get up that elevator, watch that sweet cutscene where he takes all his gear off. Uh, I take it back. Title card. I did have one more nice thing to say. Oh, yeah? The, the noise when you pick stuff up is awesome. It, that's really yeah. satisfying. It's that such trippy sound sort design. of electronic thing oh that's good yeah there's um you know there's just this really they just give you so many opportunities and possibilities in that first area you just go okay well you know i could get up there or i could you know i mean i could walk in the front door that would be completely out of the question but Ring? everyone every single person i know always goes for the vent on the bottom level that is behind the sleeping guard everyone because it is the easiest path to get into that game. Well, and Colonel Campbell kind of makes it pretty clear that that's the best option. He does. And I, I it's funny because I've played it so many times, I don't think I've ever taken another path into that building. What are the other paths into that building? So there's a vent on the uh, sort of the, the catwalk above that that's, area. That's the one I took. Really? Yeah. I didn't I even know there was faster. one below. Huh. Oh, yeah. I took the, I took the, vent, the vent on the bottom... Somehow ended up on top, 
came out the vent on the catwalk, <laughs> walked back around down the stairway on the right side, <laughs> then figured out, oh, I don't know, 45 minutes later, to go back up to the, to the top and then drop through the catwalk. Mm, okay. That's, that's yeah. the John McClane playthrough. <laughs> you, you, you spend all your day on the vents. Constantly, yeah. <laughs> With my Zippo, chasing rats. Yeah, just that first area where you're like, okay, they introduce you to like almost all of your gameplay mechanics at that point. Like you can pick up the SOCOM, you can get into shooting if you're really bad at it. Like you know, you are the first couple times you play this game. It's just it's it's incredible the amount of information they provide you in those first couple of levels. I've always I've always admired that. And if you don't know what to do, just hit the codec. Yes. They will always tell you what to do. They will. I was, writing, I was writing down codec frequencies for probably the first two and a half hours. Yeah. So, oh, God, that's what they saved. saved. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, because you had to do that in the first one. Yes. Didn't you? You did. So, old habits die hard. So, now we get into the, uh, the uh, interesting part. Jay-Z, what didn't you like? <sighs> This game, Boston, Try to keep you might it under an hour, Jay Z. You might have to edit this out, but I believe on Twitter I said this game is as ugly as the devil's scrotum. Ooh. <laughs> when That's when funny. you go in the elevator, I don't agree with that. God bless him for the time. I'm sure it looked awesome, but that first cutscene when he's taken off his gear, when he took off his like face mask or you know, um, the, uh, whatever it was covering his face, yeah, the breathing apparatus, and I saw him, and I went. Oh my, out loud, oh my god, this is ugly. <laughs> like, they did the best they could with what they had, but, you know, go back and look at Final Fantasy VII. Those models, it's Ooh, a good thing they went the enemy. No, 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 yeah, I was gonna say, those, those models in Seven are cartoons. Yeah. Because there's yeah. no, they realize there's no way to make something look good they, with this you're, level. You're right, you're absolutely right. If Metal Gear Solid looked like a cartoon, I don't think it would have been nearly as successful. No, not at all. It wouldn't have, but wow, it was just really visually unpalatable, and I, and I, I get it. I don't, I don't know that I can agree with the word unpalatable. It is rough. It is an early PlayStation game, mm-hmm. or a PlayStation 1 game. I don't think that I can go as far as say it's terrible. I, I, was I would say there's a two... little surprised by how good it looked, given that it was a PlayStation 1 game. Well, here's the thing. It's sort of in spite of itself. It was watchable because there, there are two eras of graphics in video games the the two worst are like Atari and then right after that is PlayStation 1 and it's not their fault people didn't it was the, the jump to 3D mm-hmm. but not the power to do it like it had to be that stepping stone that doesn't mean it's good no like you can't get to World War Two without World War One. Not <laughs> saying I'm gonna go dig a trench. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> why do you always have to Godwin our our podcast? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't Godwin anything. So what I'm getting at though is, I understand your complaint about the character models when we're talking about a video that they're anytime the characters are looking at each other and speaking to each other in a cutscene. It's gross. You can't see their faces. They don't have mouths. They don't it's really a blob. They have no eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Psycho Manus was supposed to be all scary and ugly, and it's just like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> but I, I, can't, I can't say that I think that the game itself, when you're running around, doesn't look that terrible. Doesn't look it, bad at all. It wasn't awesome, but they, it was workable. Those models, I just can't get past. Especially because, you know... Not for nothing, but Snake is not a real, uh, let's, he's not reading a lot of Jezebel. Let me put it that way. <laughs> um, he, he sort of chases every woman he runs across, and every woman in the game is treated, you know, it's all the regular Metal Gear Solid crap that they do. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Meryl has two characteristics. One is she's hot, and, well, according to her, um, and... The other, which is funny, because when you watch that model waddle, like, awkwardly blocky, <laughs> you know. The sexy walk. Yes, the yes. cross-country skiing walk, yeah. Um, <laughs> makes that kind of funny, but whatever. Um, is that she's hot, and the other thing that she says almost immediately upon meeting you is that she has had psychotherapy so that she no longer finds men attractive. So, like, you put that in a game now... It's just we've come so far as far as our ideas of, you know, um, 
people's sexual preferences and whatnot. Because not only can you talk someone out of being straight, a uh, snake is man enough to like convince her that she's gonna be straight again. <laughs> Just, oh, I hated it. Hated it. <laughs> we have come so far. Metal gears are no longer offensive to women now. Thank God. <laughs> oh, oh wait. Oh wait. There's a, there's a sniper girl there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but before that, there's a trend here. <laughs> Before that, what was um what was the the short one? Ground Zeroes. Yeah. Um, yeah. The way that the chick died there seemed really shocking to a lot of people. Where mm -hmm. she had a bomb in her, and we're not going to go any further than that. Yeah. Um, but there was a line in this one where Meryl had like the knock list or whatever whatever disc that was you were holding on for Dick Cheney. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she was like, you know, women have more hiding places than men, and I was like, what? Yeah, what? <laughs> Who? How many people signed off on this script? Like two, probably, dude. Oh, it's, it's so it was gross. A, a I don't know why you're upset by 90s. that. Why are you upset by? I find that a great. I put that in my positives. <laughs> it's just it's a, a great line. It's also a biological set. fact. She was talking about her purse. Come yeah, on, yeah, guys. Jake. I'm not sure if you know this, but <laughs> men and women are different. Yeah, it's just it's it's the same issues I had with Shadows of the Damned, except here they didn't realize they were being goofy. It's just, ugh. <laughs> you know, if and even if you want to make a joke like that, there's a billion better ways to do it, and that's clearly not something that got changed in translation. I, ugh, it was gross. Yeah. I I, ju I would just like to add that it's it's a good thing you bring this up because with all the uproar about the the last quiet character being so sexist and whatever. It, it is a trend in these games and it, yeah. it could be the positive or the negative thing. I mean, the first thing that Psycho Mantis does is like talk, talk dirty to Meryl or something. I don't know. What he she makes Meryl talk dirty <laughs> to Snake, yeah. He gets her yeah. to, to talk dirty to Snake and it's not even talk dirty. It's not even suggestive. It's pleading. Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah, it, it seems a little. It, it did seem a little heavy-handed. Every woman in this game is basically a one-dimensional character, there to you know. Be I like, don't. No, I don't think. I don't agree with that. Okay, no. your 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 other argument is probably the doctor. Yes. So okay, sure. she's not. She's, she's not, not one-dimensional at all. No. Mm. And then look at look at Meryl's character. You're complaining about her being a sex object. That's not the only thing she is. Look at the very first meeting you have, right? She busts you out of the, that cell when the DARPA chief. Yeah, and then basically stands the there crying chief. and makes you shoot everyone because she can't yes. do it. Yes, it, that's an arc. And then look at where she comes at the end of the game. If she does. If she. <laughs> if she gets there. Uh, depending that's on your. Base, that's basically the best. The not the best. That's basically the first. Boss fight or something. Oh, the, when all the when all the guards start coming in. Yeah, yeah, you can think of it that way. Yeah, but I but think I, I, it's more and than the big just strong it. man has to protect the little girl. <laughs> but it's more than just the gameplay. Uh, you're being way too harsh on that. It's and not like that because she she actually ends up shooting them. Right. Yeah. It I, to me it's a very mature. I mean it's it's a point it's a subtle point that I think makes this Metal Gear game great is that it takes the time to put this scene in here where a pretty major player in the story can't shoot a gun mm -hmm. and then sort of snaps her out of it. it. It gives her some development. It would have been much easier for them just to have her start shooting when the door opens. I, I see where you're coming from on this. I, I'm not feeling it, but that's, that's definitely a very fair argument to make. I'll give you that. And it makes I, for a pretty cool kind of conversation afterwards. It does. About, about why she couldn't pull the trigger. It's pretty interesting, though. Yeah, it's. It, I, I like it because it is that. It, it, it sort of. I mean, the whole game is based around this idea of okay, you have all these you know super soldiers and stuff, but they're being trained in VR. And is that you know is that going to acclimate them to the horrors of the things they're going to have to do once they're actually you know fighting real people? And yeah. I, think, I think that's I think that's where they're going for it. I I definitely get where you're reading it as like a you know uh, you know he's protecting her sort of thing, and you can totally read it like that. Wait, you know it's what? Totally like that's totally. You can, but it would be can. one thing, Jake. It would be one thing if that's the way her character stayed throughout the entire game. Clearly, it's not. After you get the Psycho Manus fight out of the way, she leads you through the caves. Yeah, she steps up 
Yeah. And takes a lead role in that situation. And then she gets, and then she gets shot. <laughs> yeah. But my point is, she's no longer the, the cowering little character that was there at the start of the game. And see, I didn't get the impression that she was some super badass. I got the impression that when she leads you through the minefield, no. she just had prior knowledge. No, no, I'm not. And didn't she... didn't know she could just get on her belly and just go straight through and not. Get no, no, no. <laughs> what I'm trying to get at. What I'm trying to. Get, you don't even have to get on your belly. You can just run straight up. What I'm trying to get at though is that her character changed. If the character that was there when she opened the gel, the cell door for you, was there in the caves, you would be leading her by the hand through the rooms. Yeah. But that's not what happened. And I probably had a lot to do with the fact that that would have been awful gameplay. It probably was a little factor of maybe convenience, but it also works in the story. It works in her character arc. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Let me put it that way. <laughs> I right. just didn't have as big a problem with you. I completely agree with you, by the way, on the whole um, sex object thing. And the it's whole scene probably, in the bathroom where... It's probably all that that I'm thinking of this in aggregate, and I can't shake those other apparent attitudes that Kojima has towards women. And so I'm seeing them in the mindset of a guy who's basically, well, I can't say that, um, <laughs> who's a misogynist to some extent. And so that sort of, I can't, I cognitively frame everything about this game from the mindset of someone who thinks that way. So I'm probably overreading on some of this stuff, but yeah. No, that's okay. That's, you're totally entitled to that. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah. So and I, I disagree just, with you on the surface. I just think you're you're letting that overwhelm everything. You're letting that sh cast a shadow. It's too big. I absolutely am. I'm not prepared to say that's not fair. Yeah, meet in the middle there. Fair yes. enough. I'll admit I'm doing that, but I think there's good reason <laughs> to do that. Um. So I didn't save after the torture sequence. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. You mean you didn't save before That's it, the yeah. Torture sequence. Between the the uh, sniper wolf fight and the torture sequence. Or you mean... No, no, no. Hit, wait, I mashed mean... that button 48 billion times <laughs> and made it through the torture sequence. Oh. And then something weird happened. A guy brought me ketchup, and I put the ketchup on my chest, and the guard saw me do it. So he's just like, what are you doing with the ketchup, man? Really? <laughs> and then oh, something... Incredible. Something screwed up, and I was like, I, I don't know if I got mad or had to reset or whatever, but I came back, and it was like, hey, we're going to do this again. I was like, I, I give up. <laughs> we're getting the bad ending, boys. Yeah. But I don't think that's a bad ending. No, no. So And the funny part is they're both canon. So I didn't actually get to the ending. I got to the, the Metal Gear Rex fight, mm. and I told myself, I'm not restarting a two-stage fight that has two cutscenes in it all the way from the beginning, a fourth time, we're done here. That'll break a man. So what, what, what are the differences here? Because we can spoil whatever we want. So the major differences is uh, if you give up during the torture, uh, after the Metal Gear Rex fight, you actually fist fight Liquid Snake on top of Metal Gear Rex. Um, and if you beat him, you go over to Meryl and she's dead. Oh. Uh, if you make it through the torture, she's alive. And what's their reasoning then, for that? No clue. And then you run off. I think it's just a way to get multiple endings. Isn't yeah, it? I think that's just, it's just the a gimmick. Point. Yeah. It's a gimmick. You know, it's it's a good gimmick to make the torture scene mean something. Mm -hmm. And but I it's, also, <clears throat> it's not the like they directly said you divulge something in the torture sequence that they now don't need Meryl anymore or something. They didn't no, even but try I like and. That. I like that. There's no necessarily direct connection. Okay. It's just a branch point. It's just a All point right. to branch with. And I like that. I also very much like the fact that they do not allow you to save and that you're done. And whatever you saved, I think it puts real consequence on that scene. Yeah. My only complaint would be that they allow you to save right before that sequence. I think they need to let you save an hour or something. You know, you need real consequence that if you yeah. fail that torture sequence by not this giving up... This game you're needs more pain. backtracking. You're right. You're in for pain. <laughs> yeah. I heard. I, I heard you're about, the, about the backtracking, but I didn't. I again didn't have an issue with it. I I've always found it tedious, but it's not such a big game that it's really a stressor point for me. But like, yeah, the backtracking's a little on the excessive side. You're literally staring at Liquid Snake through a window. 
next to Metal Gear Rex. Like this big scary boss. This is the whole point of the game. And they're like, mm -hmm. go back to the first room. Like, mom. <laughs> like, it's just it. Anywhere the other points in the game where there was backtracking, I didn't like it, but fine. It just the the point like that is. They're building that up to be the climax running, of the game. Running around, putting the key back together. Yeah. yeah. And so it's a I'm cool idea. I mixed on that because that idea release. is great. Yeah. That idea is wonderful. There's so many good ideas in this game, but I understand. I feel your pain completely. Yeah. Because it seems like you are building to this crescendo, and then you uh, stop. Awesome the idea. Whole. The timing sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, Zerbero, are you still here? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. Sorry, don't listen. Speak up. Yeah, I, I, I just there are a few things that I would like to say about the the torture scene before well, yeah, we okay. move on. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting for a number of reasons. First of all, I agree with you guys that you need a, a bigger penalty other than just I don't know, continue the game and that's mm -hmm. it. I think I think it's a major turning point in, in the game. It's a, a moment in which you have. You have no tools. You're completely stripped of everything you have, and you have this person in front of you who's ready to destroy you, oh, and all you have to do is resist it. You're stripped of your turbo buttons as well. Yeah, he even like he that, even goes, uh, he even breaks the fourth wall. He says, "Don't use the turbo button, or yeah. I will know." <laughs> so I, I think it's a, there's a lot of, of of little spices that make that scene also part of a, what makes Metal Gear great, which is. Those fourth wall breaks and also you know what the fact I, that it's so connected to the story. You know what I would have liked to have seen as a penalty is to uh, save wipe. Oh, mm. that's something Kojima would do too. You're way too harsh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I don't think it's way too harsh at all because I think the point of the torture scene is either you survive it or you give up. And I think, because you, you have either of those options, mm -hmm. I think not doing either one of those options should be a gigantic penalty. And a save wipe would be a Good way of doing so it. So this is your penalty for trying my game and failing it instead of just giving up right no, away. No, no, no. You're talking no, about the director no. who wanted to make a game where if you lost, the disc self-destructed in the system. <laughs> <laughs> just, and I'm not picturing like melt. I'm picturing like literally explode. <laughs> the PlayStation is now fragments. Yes. But you're making it sound like oh, you walked down the wrong hallway. He clearly outlines before the torture sequence that this is different. Mm -hmm. That there is no continuing, there's no saving. That you have a submit to give up button and you have a resist button. I just think if you take that lightly, you should have some... You should have to just do another four hours of the game. Sure. Nah. <laughs> I think it's funny on paper. I would be real, real mad. If how, I played a game in that how is that different than the Psycho Mantis fight where you have to pull your controller out and put it in a different port? Oh, that was awful. It's uh, everyone, it's, everyone raves about how Jake, cool that is. Now fight I know is. what it's like to talk to me, and I don't like me. <laughs> Explain why that was awful. That's brilliant. The Psycho Mantis fight, period, is one of the most brilliant boss fights ever devised. Yeah, I compare it to um, X Men on the Genesis. Yeah, where you literally kinda... have to reset the console. To me, that's that's not fair and it's not fun. So, like the Psycho Man stuff with, um, you know, where he's screwing with your video and whatnot. Like, okay, I get that you're breaking the fourth wall. Oh yeah. To do Which, something. Like, sorry, I don't want to cut you off, but the video thing doesn't work now. No, not <laughs> no. <at all>. TVs <laughs> don't operate the way it used to. Yeah, we don't, we don't get blue screens that say video anymore, but. Um, that that was funny, and I would have been okay with that. Actually, having to switch controller ports, which by the way took me a little bit to figure out on PSN. Yeah, you gotta actually like swap your controller to number two. It just that just seems to me to be inherently unfair, and they don't even really give you a lot of clues. If you in call the, they the codec, they do. Yeah, like literally, Campbell says switch the controller ports if you call enough. Or switch to the keyboard if you're playing it on PC. He actually says that. Oh, seriously? <laughs> yeah, that's he really. says, I, I got it, use the keyboard. <laughs> huh. But yeah, I mean, that's that's another advantage of the codec, is that you're not completely in the dark. If, mm -hmm. if you if you make enough calls, you will get the answer. So it's like, okay, I'm, I'm done trying to figure this thing out. Just give me the answer. You can always codec for help. 
Yeah, I, I guess. But I guess I, I just can't didn't think tell about you that. How amazing! And it doesn't work on PSN the way it worked on the original PlayStation. Yeah. Because switching your controller port on the PSN is a button press. Physically getting up and moving your port, it, it blew my mind mm -hmm. in the late '90s. Because how many years have you played video games and it's port one, port one? Now we don't have actual physical ports, but I thought it was just mind-bendingly cool. It was clever. And but... don't get me wrong, it's, it's super aggravating, super annoying when you're running around trying to figure out what to do. But I think that's the whole point. I think it makes Psycho Mantis's character that much better. It's that fourth wall breaking that Metal Gear has always been really cool with. But it's See, not even I'm, fourth wall breaking. Even, Here's a character that supposedly can read your thoughts and literally is reading your thoughts. But he's looking past Snake. He's looking at the player. Yes. You know what I mean? That's, that's where the fourth wall comes in. Unbelievable. I even goes it. as far as to... If, you, if your second port is actually broken, I, read, I, I was not able to prove it myself, but I read that you call Campbell enough times or you lose enough times until he actually says, just go ahead and see for, see for the, the sculptures that are in the back. That, that'll, that, that will do it. So you oh. see for the statues that have Psycho Mantis face, yes. and that's it. He can't read you anymore for some reason. I, have heard so they, they, they I even didn't know that's how you did that. that. Yeah. So they even built yeah, in a failsafe if you didn't have a port that worked. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think that's all super clever stuff. I'd rather read about someone else experiencing it. <laughs> Jake, do you like fun? No, he does not. It's okay. I yeah. love fun. I wish I could have had some. <laughs> Can't help you, Jake. All right. You okay. want to know something else? Another weird detail that this game has. In the torture scene, between the two torture scenes, if you keep calling... At some point, uh, Naomi will tell you to put the controller on your finger, and she will your actually arm. make it vibrate your arm. Yeah, on your arm, and she will make it vibrate to, yeah. to massage you. <laughs> that's that's so weird. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's so weird in the best way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that yeah. I actually kind of got a kick out of because you put it somewhere else, didn't you, Jake? You're damn right, I did. You didn't put it on your arm. <laughs> put it on my neck. But you are in pain. You you are as a player, you are in pain, and as a character, you are in pain. Yeah, yeah I, I thought that was cool. I liked that. So, of the bosses that you fought, which one was the weakest? Not not in terms of easiest to kill, in terms of character. And I liked us a lot. Mm -hmm. um, Raven was Raven was the weakest for me. I yeah. agree with that completely. Raven was the weakest, and I think it's a shame. I think that's a first, giant and shaman. That first fight you have with him out on the snowfield. He's not even there. No. Even, it's generic. Even, even those two words, even those two words, don't make any sense. What, what kind of description is? You are a giant and a shaman. <laughs> so you're describing the physical appearance and the profession of the guy. So they're not connected at all. You could be a skinny shaman for all. Like, don't but matter. He, he doesn't have to be a giant and a shaman. I feel like giant should just be a modifier for shaman. He's a giant shaman. Yeah, I like that interpretation. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was. Yeah, well, I, I think that was the weakest. Yeah. Sniper yeah. Wolf wasn't awesome. Sniper but... Sniper Wolf is so tense, though, man. I Both cheesed those it. Fights. Yeah, did you Nikita it? I Nikita it. Yeah. Oh, you... that's not cheesing it. That's the right way to play. <laughs> <laughs> I I totally cheesed that one. Love uh, it. Because I, I had I such just, a like... rough time with the first fight with her. Yeah. In the hallway. Yeah. Because she Why pops you, and then all of a sudden you're turned around, and you rescope, but you got to turn. And that's not an easy fight by any stretch of the imagination. That I've always had trouble with that fight, especially because you know if you don't get that phantasm down, your aim is just like. Ugh. If you get a good seed, so to speak, like in Isaac or Spelunky, we would call it a seed. Like if you get a good series of her moving from this point to this point to this mm -hmm. point, you you can you can get a good sequence on her. Yeah. But there are some ways it just loads up where it's like. I just can't find her. She yeah. shot. Did, now, did you watch the breath when she was hiding behind the pillars? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, I love. That's such a great little touch. It was very. It happens with the trees too. Yeah, yeah. Um, She's the first boss that you actually fight. Uh, going back to what you said before, Jake, that all the bosses like fight you for a little bit and then they run away. Yeah. This is the first one that you actually get to kill. And it, for me personally, if if you're not into anime. The, this whole concept of a dying enemy telling you their entire life is completely new. 
So that, that really blew my mind because yeah. th that's the first enemy that you actually get to kill. And it, it also sets the tendency of these enemies like revealing their souls to you before they, before they die. And then Assassin's Creed stole that later. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting little thing that I, I kind of enjoyed mm -hmm. having them sort of monologue on the way out. Yeah. And then like I'll the tell you the one point the one point I didn't like Wolf. it though was at the end with Liquid. Oh yeah. Just um, die not, already. Not Liquid, sorry, Gray Fox. Oh yeah, yeah. Where he monologues and I was like it, it, it goes back to Jake's point. You're building to this climax and then you stop. Whereas the boss fights felt like you were building to a climax you reached the climax, and then you had this exposition. Yeah. The, when it made the you Fox feel thing was in the it, middle of a fight, and it was yeah. awkward. And some people got to watch it five times. Um, <laughs> I, you know what? And I liked Press that. Press that start button. I, I liked also, kind of in spite of myself, I liked that they made you feel a little sympathetic. Because I hated almost all those boss fights. Mm -hmm. Just the execution was rough because you you know you don't have an analog stick and no no you do i'm sorry i i was thinking like first person shooting like oh, mgs okay. yeah, oh, no. yeah yeah okay two um yeah the the snap aiming's kind of okay um but just the mechanics of all the boss fights were clever but executing them i found to be real annoying mm -hmm. so i was kind of getting mad at myself that i felt sympathetic towards these people i spent 45 minutes just getting my <laughs> face pounded in by <laughs> But so you had cool. trouble with the, with the boss fights? Just I don't think general? I one shot at any of them. Ocelot, I did pretty okay on. Ocelot can be rough though. Did you now? How did you handle that fight? I'm curious. Um, I think I probably fought him maybe two times. First time I just tried to do straight up so common him, and that, that worked pretty good. Okay. Um, the second time I went, I have all this C4. What am I doing? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he was he was all right. Um, Sniper Wolf is sort of fine but tedious. Mm -hmm. um, Shaman Raven, Bareface, McGee, Chain Gun Guy. <laughs> um, cool idea. Way too much health. Yeah. Um, who else was there? There was the Hind oh. the Liquid fight with the helicopter. That was okay. I liked that one. But again, that on higher difficulties is my least favorite fight because it is so hard. Well, there's so much health on that too. Yeah. Um, although I, I did like that one. Um, oh, and and uh, Manus Face. Manus Face. <laughs> uh, it, it was fine once I figured out the fight, but mm -hmm. I wish I would have. Yeah, you know, and I guess it's on me for not mashing that codec every two seconds. But it's one of those things like you forget about it. I was I wasn't getting any sort of clues from the game that you're not figuring this out so much as maybe this is just his phase. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what he does during this phase, you know, so I'll, I'll take the heat for that one, though. Fair enough. Alright, um, so Jay-Z, that's, that's, your, that's your laundry list? Yeah, yeah, it was only like 45 minutes, huh? Yeah, right. Um, Alright, our, our guest, Cerebro, you got any uh, major gripes with this game despite your love for it? Well, I, I absolutely love the game, but yeah, I, I do have a few a few points that I was not completely sure about, especially the second time now that I played it around. Mm -hmm. My my major beef with it would be the the higher the greater than life plot. <laughs> As that I is, enjoy yes. I enjoy a very good uh, spy story, the what they're trying to do, what they're trying to tell. Mm -hmm. But fr from the words of Kojima himself, he said, "The message of this game is what we pass on to other generations." Yes. Because it's it's about genes and yes. snake can, snake cannot have children. So what is he going to leave behind for the future? So at the end, when uh, when the doctor uh, starts reflecting on the meaning of life itself, I would say, whoa, hold on there. <laughs> I, I know we just stopped a nuclear holocaust, but we didn't we didn't fix the world. Okay, we didn't figure out life itself. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think it's a bit it's a bit greedy. In, it's in it's a story. bit it's a bit more grand than it has earned, maybe. Yes. Okay. That that was my feeling at the end of the game when when have, you ride towards the sunset. Have you played the second one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just you, making sure. Do you sure. really want to get into that? <laughs> I don't have there's not enough time in the month. 
I'll suggest it for the next game. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, is, that is see you guys in January. Yeah, that is legitimately a game I think everyone should play. I'm, so I'm only going to say it. this. The first one, let's compare it to the Codex. The first one you have someone talking about Alaska, yep. about Russian weapons. Yep. You have oh, a gosh. specialist for everything. Yep. And on the second one, you have your girlfriend giving you... <laughs> Giving you shit because you don't remember the anniversary. So, <laughs> no, I, I'm not a fan of the second one. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so dumb, but I love it. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, any other big uh, major issues with the game? Gameplay, you know, characters? Nope. All right. No, not really. Nintendo work? Yeah, there's some things. I mean, it's not a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination. No. As much um, as I would like to believe it is. I found myself in this sort of weird thing where I would pick the game up and play if I had been away from it for a few days and just die constantly. Yeah. And then after I died about 16 times or so, I'd get in a groove and I'd sail through for a while. Mm -hmm. I'd play for a while without dying. And then put it down, come back a few days later in the same routine. I don't know if that was just me or what. I seem to remember having that experience a lot during that era of gaming. I don't know if maybe it was just the the sort of technology or maybe the age I was or whatever, but it's weird that you bring that up because I haven't really had that experience since, except with maybe Dark Souls. Um, Shadows of Mordor did that to me. I, I took like a week break from that game and I walked in and I just started getting murdered. Hmm. Okay. I think you have to criticize... Um, the lack of vision by the guards, even though they do have vision. <laughs> I think you have to criticize some of the nearsightedness that they demonstrate. Yeah. No, the other thing sure. that I, I don't like, and That's I guess... the bad genes. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, well, now you boss, take David soldier, away. Totally nearsighted. Yeah, bad retinas. Yeah. We, we, need, we need to work on these retinas. And this must exist because it's a... Um, a function of the hardware that maybe it was running on. But I found myself watching the minimap way more than the actual screen. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be a pain. That's sort of true for all the Metal Gear games up until 3. Well, it's, it's I, the GTA problem. Yeah. Exactly. It's you have to do it, but until they figured out, you know, in Saints Row, how to make that work, it's just it was, it was how those games played because they hadn't figured it out yet. Yeah. And it's not necessarily a giant negative, but it almost would have been nicer to discover things through the screen and not the mini map. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, uh, I, I totally get that. That's that's a common complaint of games of this type. Period. I mean, you look at Metal Gear Solid Two, you look at some of the early Splinter Cell games. It's all about that little that little radar. And I don't know if this is reaching, but the base felt a little empty. It kind of well, did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can only render like three characters at once. <laughs> right. I'm sure this is all limitation on the hardware and things mm -hmm. like that. Also, it's Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it, it does create a problem if you do put 100 people in a base and you go, well, why are all these people following this terrorist organ? You know. Now, now, let me tell you, that base feels real empty until you trip an alarm. Right. Yeah. 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 Then it's then it's aliens. Yes. They're just pouring out of the ducts and forever respawning and yeah. I wish I had turrets in this game. Most of the stuff was on the stairs though for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. That big stairs that you have to climb. Mhm. Mm okay. So and this will touch a little bit on Jake's frustration at the end of the game. The Metal Gear Rex fight is obnoxious mainly because it has two stages separated by a big cutscene. And it has a one hit kill. It does have a one-hit kill. Mm -hmm. it, the missiles can just destroy you. Yeah, they will mess your world up. And if you fail in the second phase, you've got to go through the first phase again. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it's not that way in any other part of the game. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a little tough. I would have stuck with it if they didn't make me keep watching those cutscenes and going through the first phase. I would have. So I, I swear. You, you can skip everything but the, the actual death of Gray Fox. So right, yeah. No, I, I picked up on that. But I'm but, still doing the first phase of this fight and then watching him get smashed and I can't do anything. Right. Yeah. Right. And I have to say, I had the same frustration. I played that scene a dozen times. I died a lot. 
and I felt a little cheap when I got through it. I ended up just hanging out sort of under and behind Metal Gear. Mm -hmm. And then it would stop after a minute or so. And then you just load up your stinger, I think yep. is what you used. Yep. And you blow into the cockpit yes. from underneath yeah. and behind almost. And that's going to get a lot, a lot of laughs from Donnie. But yes, it is. Well, especially when you this. consider that every Metal Gear in the entire series has a big giant wang gun. Yeah, it does. They make me laugh every time. Yeah, it was it was extra entertaining in Metal Gear Solid Five trailer though. Oh yeah, everybody in that in that um, when we went to that panel at PAX, <laughs> oh, yeah. everyone started cracking up. Everyone was laughing just because of the way they like the low angle for it, and they mm. shot up like. <laughs> Like, is, did, did they tell them to do that so it looked almost bigger? looks like it's prehensile, you know? <laughs> uh, the uh, I guess the last negative thing I can mention is that at the end when they're expositioning about all the biological modifications they've made and the DNA this, it's all very TV science. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. It's not grounded in any sort of real science. Yeah. And having a degree in that field, it's... A little it seemed, seemed like they started from a good place. To. We did, and you, get, you really have to just suspend your disbelief a little bit. Absolutely. It probably, for somebody who doesn't know DNA from RNA, doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. But it it's a little hokey. It's it's kind of like so you're viewing this the same way I watch like CSI, and I go, that is not how you hack. Yes, yeah. for you it would be if somebody is talking about computers. Yeah, no, for me, I, I'm I on the biology you. side of it, and yeah. say that it's not the way that this operates. But I can respect that, but it's, like so, it, somebody it's talking a little about picky because what's that? For me, it'd be like somebody talking about burgers or something. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to add one thing though that is really good about this game we haven't touched on. Mm -hmm. They implemented full motion video, real video. Yeah in some of the bigger, longer monologue parts, and I thought that was a nice touch to give you something visual to look at that wasn't the game or wasn't the Kodak. Or... Yeah, I thought I, I always liked that when you're talking to um, Dick Cheney, Kenneth Baker, the <laughs> arms tech president. Um, he's talking about like nu nuclear disarmament, nuclear weapon proliferation and stuff like that, and then they're showing you like shots of you know spent nuclear fuel, and it's like, yeah, this is a real problem, and it's like... All, like it, it, it's it's really heavy handed in some spots, but it's kind of cool that they went out and like got that footage. That was great. Yeah, and I, and like the anime stuff when you're talking to Otacon, you get shots of like police knots and stuff. I, I want to say that was sort of a low point in what? the game for me, where you you come across Otacon and he's getting accosted by Gray Fox, mm -hmm. and he's well, talking about he refers like to himself. Anime. Yeah, he refers to himself as an otaku. Yeah. And his that, name is Atakan. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. That was so, kind of hitting the nail on the head, guys. Yep. I That's, thought it, I thought it was a little more than needed. Absolutely. Much. But given the time period, it wasn't a big thing at the time, so yeah, I don't know. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. This is definitely a 21st century view on a, on a game that at the time, nobody I didn't know what an otaku was. No. So it's sort of I had to explain that in a way. Yeah. So, they they were they oh, yeah. way over explained it, I think though. So. Maybe to us now it's over explained. Probably in the day it was not. It was That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Alright. Um I'll say like one of my least favorite things about this game has always been the control scheme. I don't like it. Never have, probably never will, but like I live with it. I understand why it is the way it is. There weren't like hard standards for any real like type of game at the time, so you know you just did the best you can with what you have, and it's workable. But God, there has there has to be a better way. And what what, what do you what specifically? So specifically, when you're talking about like aiming and shooting, it gets real wonky yeah. when you're you know when you've got the gun out and you're trying to aim it. And it like that auto aim works, but sometimes it doesn't. You know, that it, elevator it, where the invisible ninjas uh -huh. show up. There's a perfect example of yeah. We either need to fix the the gunplay or we need to take this piece out. Because, yeah, and it, it gets easier when yeah. you have an analog controller and you can use the analog stick and set it up so that you can do it in you know full full motion sort of. But you know what's uh, funny about the analog thing is when I first started playing, I didn't realize the analog was an option. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it wasn't until a third of the way through my playthrough that I realized that I could use the analog stick. And I found myself swearing at times, thinking, oh, I need an analog stick. So then I put the analog stick on, and I switched it back to the D-pad. Yeah? Because the game just felt like it played better with okay. the D-pad. I, so I, play, the really? I play it when I'm playing it on like a, a full-size controller, I will play with analog. But if I'm playing it on the Vita or something, I have to do D-pad because those analog sticks just can't keep up. Um, so other than other than controls, I mean, like yeah, the story's convoluted, but it's really entertaining. You know, some of the Otacon's not a great character in the first game. He's just sort of there. He's really whiny. He's uh, all right. I like him. He's okay, but like after a while, you're just like, oh, dude, shut up. I don't care. Talking about this story, though, isn't this one of the first stories that actually took video games to, I would say, a a level beyond save the princess? Yes, absolutely. You have moral gray areas. You have, God, that scene. Oh, man, that scene where you first go into the, the Gray Fox fight and you're walking down that hallway and everyone's just everyone's blood is everywhere. Yeah. That's such yeah. a that cool That was a cool piece. fight, by the way. Once that you learn the hiding fight. spots, that was one of the better fights. Yeah, I really And, and if, you're, if you're JC, you actually don't save the princess in this game. You actually give that's up right. on the torture. <laughs> that's and, right. And that's well, it. I, I, and you give up I on the princess. You I say, saved I can't the princess in my first shot. And then went, that's going to take a lot of effort to save this princess again. I uh, no. I'm tapping out. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, other than that, I mean, there's not, I don't really have a whole ton of complaints about this game. But, I mean, a lot of it is rose-colored glasses for me. It's one of my favorite games of all time, so I have a hard time talking a lot of smack about it. And what's interesting having Jay-Z here is he's sort of laying all the faults out. And I can't disagree with them. No, not at all. But I, I still think love I the forgive game. them. But I think I forgive them because I... Thoroughly enjoy the creativity behind it. Yeah, I, I hear you. I, I keep giving him a chance. Um, I was just playing Metal Gear Solid Five not two hours ago, so there there must be something about these games that hooks me. But a lot of it was just too wonky yeah. in this first one. I mean, I played almost through the whole game. I, it's what the second to last boss fight, second yeah. to last um, actual fight. I what you feel. didn't get is you didn't get the fist fight with liquid mm -hmm. you or the thing with the jeep the jeep yeah. and the chase yeah oh that so, chase sucks <laughs> I, mean, I played a lot of this game for as much as i didn't like it so clearly there's there's a reason that it's so popular mm -hmm. um but yeah this this one just didn't this didn't is a play. great to me this is a great example of a game that is better than the sum of its parts yeah everything individually if you take it out and you look at it on its own you go, well, that's not very good. Mm -hmm. You go, that's not very good. You go, 15-minute cutscene. Who's, who's going to sit around and watch those? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good point. But you put really, it all together. And, for some reason, the whole thing elevates itself and becomes great. Yeah. Oh, it's so much fun. It, it's, it's, it's a fun game. Like, the story is just fun, and, and it's, got, it's got movement to it. And you... You can have a dog pee on the box you're hiding in to make everyone else not want to bite you. Which yes. is fantastic. Yes, that's, that's great. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, uh, anybody got any other points on this topic before we move forward? I just got yeah. a couple of gag lines. All right, let's hear them. Uh, in the intro, Snake is apparently uh, raising huskies in the Alaskan mm -hmm. wilderness mm -hmm. and running the Iditarod. He's got 50 of them. Yeah, he's going to do I, it real quick. I've never seen more than like eight Huskies on a sled, so I'm just picturing like a Monty Python, you know, just a shot on just a barren Arctic wasteland, just nothing there, and then from out of frame you just see dogs, just left to right, just dogs, 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 for like 25 <laughs> seconds, and then one dude on a sled goes by. And like a tiny sled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cut to the With next sketch. With a Bon Jovi hair, like, flying in the air. Yeah, <laughs> flying, looking real stoic. Oh, fantastic. Um, another line from the intro, and I don't, I don't know how I ever would have expected this question to be answered any differently, but it's so 80s. Yeah. Um, he's, so how armed are these terrorists? Heavily. Oh, okay. Of course. <laughs> like, what were you expecting him to say? Well, like, I don't know. They got some pretty hard snowballs. They're, you know, it's Alaska. You know what they do? They get snowballs and they get them wet and they put them in the freezer so they get real hard. Like, these guys are bad. <laughs> I'd still play that game. 
uh, one of my save files was in the underground passage, and it w abbreviated to uh, u.grnd space p-s-s-g-e, which yep. sounds like the U grind passage. <laughs> I enjoyed. Um, I don't get why you can make a joke like that, Jake, and then not like, uh, what was that game we played? The juvenile game. Well, because I didn't go four more beats past that and, like, turn the passage into a gun called the boner. Uh, something like that. <laughs> I don't uh, um, and I totally killed Meryl. Yeah. I shot her dead. <laughs> Anybody else got any uh, favorite lines or moments or anything? Well, where, where did you hide the cigarettes in my stomach? Yeah, that's pretty good. And <laughs> I, I, I found it funny how he, he... Well, it's a way to guide the player by the hand, but he fails to understand some pretty basic concepts. I know how I, I pay attention to it, and he says, like, what? Like, 20 times during mm -hmm. the game? Metal yeah, Gear. that's a great... <laughs> I don't know, I, I love David Hayter's uh, voice in the, in the character. It's, it's priceless. It's, it's pretty great. It's really good, but it, it, it's like he fails to grasp some of the concepts in the game. So it had, they have to be spelled for him so that the player understands them as well. Yeah. Like you, you realize Liquid is there, like when he starts taking like all the costume and everything, and Campbell is like, oh no, it's and <laughs> silence. And Snake still doesn't see it and he doesn't <laughs> understand it. So <laughs> I just thought it was funny how he, he's a bit dull. That's, Poor that's, Snake. That's he's he's the, the he's a genetic clone of the finest soldier ever created by humanity, and like he doesn't know what a phone is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Liquid Snake complaining that he has all the recessive genes, like a crybaby. Oh, no, that was fun. <laughs> See, that's sort of what I was kind of leaning towards a while ago when I was talking about the biology breaks down. Having all of the recessive genes is ne not necessarily a bad thing. That was my the, thought. The it's five not fingers you have on your hand are recessive. You know, six fingers are dominant. Yeah. So clearly Solid doesn't have six fingers. Clearly. Okay. He was probably bullied at school for that reason. All right. So well, you never know. I, I think right. that about does it here, guys. I, I think we've fairly well covered this game. I didn't think I'd get this mad. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't. All right. You know, Jake, what are we going to do when both of us agree on a game? Oh, well, just one of us will have to not call in. Probably. I don't know. It might you gotta be... hash this out ahead of time. Or, or you just agree about completely different things and fight about that. Yeah, we can do that. I like that. I'm flexible. All right. All right. Uh, Cerebro, uh, you got anything you want to plug? You got a Twitter account, Twitch account, anything you want to want people to find? Uh, well, I have a friend who actually runs a podcast. It's called Nerd Attack. Oh, cool. So it's around our, our alley. So nice. <laughs> you can see by the name. It's connected to video games and movies. So that's that's about it. I, I really like it. It's a really good podcast. Cool. All right. Uh, Jay-Z, where can folks find you? Uh, Twitter, the other Jay-Z-E-E. -E. Okay. Um, also, I am on the Carousel Podcast now. I'm yeah. one of the co-hosts. Uh, Congratulations. Is, yeah. Thank you, sir. It's good stuff. Uh, every other Monday, we do shows. It's usually up that Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, we do stream generally every Monday with the off weeks being like this week we did Castle Crashers. Nice. Uh, I will warn everybody, very not safe for work language. That's perfectly we, fine. <laughs> we do not censor ourselves at all. So if you're going in expecting TVGP, it's get some headphones. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, Nintendo, where can folks find you? I'm about anywhere under the name Nintendork327. Okay. Um, and you can find me pretty much anywhere as the Hannah. You can see me every, well, almost every Sunday. Sometimes, you know, got family stuff going on. On this channel right here, uh, tvgp.tv or twitch.tv slash e1m1network. And, you know, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on, I think I'm still on Tumblr for some reason. Um, yeah, I'm sort of everywhere. So, without further ado... Uh, we have to make a little quick announcement here. Uh, so we had another vote for another Jay -Z's pregnant. game. Jay Z is pregnant. Yes, um, and you're the father, Scott. Oh my god! <laughs> so we had another vote, and the winner of well, the next what were the, game. What were the options? What, what were the, yeah, what were the games? So the options were once again Fugazi with Dark Souls, and man, I am so sorry, it did not win. 
it's we, not going to. <laughs> and then we had Lance Freeman with X Men Legends, uh, and Boston, host of TVGP, host of Picking Up the Pixels, put in Syndicate, 2013, and that won with 52 percent of the vote. Awesome. That's so, that's that's nice. the one that got my vote. I'm very excited to play this game again. I played it when it first came out. I remember really liking it. We'll see how much it holds up. This has co-op, does it not? Uh, yes, it does. Because we were talking about that being our streaming game on Carousel, so I wonder yeah. if maybe I could do that kind of thing, and then that could be, you could watch, you know, both yeah, or something. Not a bad I idea. I've got it on PC, so. There we go. Yeah, all we, right. We, we could format it. So, that's our game for next month. We're going to be playing Syndicate from 2013. Not the old Syndicate. We're talking the first-person shooter, not the strategy game. So, you know, make sure you got your stuff right. Um, I think well, I... Our next, our next show is going to be early December, not the last Thursday of the month, because Correct. Thanksgiving in America. Yeah, so we're going to be all busy the, the week before, but December 3rd we should be on, and we'll keep you posted. Thanks, everyone, for joining us uh, today. Cerebro, thank you so much uh, for, for calling in. I know it's probably a little later where you are. No problem. So, all right. And Jay-Z, Nintendo, thank you guys as well. And Thanks, guys. And we'll see you next month. And I'll see you guys on Sunday for TVGP.